This is going to be worse than anyone has ever seen before. Those are the words from the world's largest investment manager, BlackRock, talking about the recession. Going to be worse than anyone has foretold. That's troubling. So we're going to talk about that in a second. But first, welcome into the Investing in Real Estate show. I'm Clayton Morris. So glad to have you all here. Our goal is to make you a more intelligent real estate investor on this show. The reason we invest in real estate is for the tax benefits and as a massive hedge against inflation. Ultimate wealth building tool, in my opinion, has been used for 4,000 years right alongside gold as a way to protect and preserve wealth through famine, through collapse of governments. Again, this is why so many people are buying up gold and buying up real estate right now because of those very reasons. So batten down the hatches on this Q&A episode. We're going to listen to four, three of your calls today. If you go to our website, morrisinvest.com, you can click on the microphone icon on the right-hand side of your screen and leave us a voicemail question. So we will get to three of your questions today on the show. But first, just a little bit more on this BlackRock news that's just out today. Uh, they say a recession is foretold as central banks race to try to tame inflation. It's the opposite of past recessions. They're saying that the economy has already exited a four-decade period of stable growth and inflation and has now entered a period of heightened instability. And folks, we've already been told, you know, telling you because they're continuing to print. As they continue, central banks ag aggressively are boosting borrowing costs in an effort to tame inflation. And inflation is, of course, running away. So they continue to print more money thinking that they're going to get us out of it by printing more and more. That's what got us into this mess. It's absolute madness, madness, right? And if you see Russia start to only accept gold in addition to the ruble for their oil, it's game over. You're going to see gold go from, you know, $1,700 or $1,800 an ounce up to $3,600 an ounce in some price predictions that I saw this past week. So you are about to see a major shift away from government fiat currencies because they are absolutely devaluing and debasing their currencies more towards hard assets, specifically gold, silver, and real estate. So folks, get ready. This is what BlackRock is saying. Um, they said central bankers won't ride to the rescue when this growth slows down in this new regime. Equity valuations don't yet reflect the damage that is coming ahead. What worked in the past won't work now, says BlackRock. The old playbook of simply buying the dip doesn't apply in this regime of sharper trade-offs and greater macro volatility. We don't see a return to conditions, they say, that will sustain a joint bull market in stocks and bonds of the kinds we experienced in the prior decade. So get ready. If you're in the stock market, folks, look out. Look out. Prepare yourselves. Don't wind up like the people that invested in FTX and woke up one morning to find out that they couldn't even access their accounts and they lost all of their money. If you're in the stock market, this volatility is foretold. Okay, it's right in front of us. Be careful. Please be careful. You know, and one thing they're saying that can actually tame inflation is a deep, deep recession. So that's the solution, folks. It, the rich people are going to be fine. It's going to be the poor and middle class that gets screwed. The only way to tame this recession or tame this inflation, they say, is a deep recession. That's it. That's the only solution. And that's what's about to happen. So please prepare yourselves. Make sure that if your money is, you know, if you've got, you're sitting on cash, okay, be careful. And if you've got money in the stock market, please be careful. Again, repositioning some of that money into hard assets that will be able to sustain itself right now. That's why my wife and I have been moving our money out of certain things, uh, certain bonds and certain um, uh, certain savings accounts into real estate and making sure that we've got precious metals lined up as well. So please protect yourselves. Please, please, please. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. All right, we've got three questions from our viewers today. So I wanted to bring you that market update. Now let's listen to what they have to ask about real estate. Pratap has a question. Good morning, Clayton. Um, this is Pratap Bandari again. Um, how do you um, handle the stress? How do you, uh, you know, um, all the stress from when when you when you put an offer and then uh, you know paperwork to um, for the banks that they ask? How do you handle all these things with your current, uh, you know, um, rentals? Um, the maintenance request, all these things. I am having so much, uh, you know, stress these days. Um, 
I just need to find, you know, a better way. I know you, you said, uh, you know, have a, a good time with family, meditation and other stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to ask you that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the question. And I'm sorry that you're going through this anxiety, you know, anxiety period, uh, Pratap. Um, I know it's difficult. You're trying to build wealth, build your portfolio, and you keep getting these things like, oh, now I got to deal with a maintenance request. And now I'm, I'm trying to do financing and now they need, they need extra documents. I mean, here's the thing. Anytime you're doing mortgages, they always like come back with more documents, more documents, more documents. Um, you know, I, Honestly, I don't let it bother me. I don't just get, I don't get emotional and tied to it, especially like if you're talking about getting into bidding wars, that sounds a little bit like what you're talking about, right? You're, you're making offers and you're waiting for people to get back to you and you're kind of dealing with that back and forth. Like, am, are they going to accept my offer? I just don't even deal with, that. I don't do bidding wars. I don't get involved in that stuff. Um, like at Morris Invest, there's no bidding wars. Like if someone, an investor comes in and buys one of our properties, there's no bidding war. Like they just buy the property and we have financing built in with our, with our banks. We work with over a hundred different lenders and we make that process pretty easy. Um, as far as maintenance requests go another, so I guess I don't have that stress at all because I let other people handle it. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It sounds like you're taking on too much. Like, why are you doing all of those things? Right? It, you shouldn't be doing all of that. Uh, you should have a team that will take care of that for you. So a property management team should be taking care of those things for you. Maintenance requests, et cetera. Now, you can set thresholds with your property management team so that you're, hey, don't bother me if it's under 500 bucks. Like if they need to change some, you know, or 300 bucks, usually there's certain thresholds, but if it's under a certain amount, don't bother me with this request. Like just take care of it and fix it. And then I'll see it on my bill at the end of the month. You know, I'll see, oh, they fixed this thing they needed fixing. There was a, a leaky faucet or something, a leaking toilet. They fixed it. I didn't need to get a phone call. I didn't need to approve it. I didn't need to get an email about it. They just took care of it. So it sounds like you might be taking on more than you should. And I would just start outsourcing those things. Uh, I got to be honest with you right now. So on, in my real estate world, I don't have that. I don't ever have that stress. I let my team, my property management teams handle that. Now, for my other business, I have some of that stress. And I'm currently during the holiday season right now, literally going to sit down while I'm while I'm not um, while I have some time off. We're not producing shows. We're not doing our, our normal daily news show. Um, we do a daily news show uh, separate on a separate YouTube channel and uh, about the broader market and, and, and geopolitics. I'm taking some time off, not going to be doing a show for a few weeks. And during that time period, what I'm going to do is, is what I highly recommend. I love this methodology, Pratap. It's called the Getting Things Done Methodology, GTD. And you might find this to be hugely helpful for you. I don't know. I would recommend a few books. Read David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, okay? And use his system. Or, and also read, um, read Atomic Habits by James Clear. A couple of book suggestions you might want to consider during the holidays. But anyway, in the getting things done methodology, he teaches you to put everything down on paper, every task that you're currently doing, write it all down. So Pratap, I just would say one afternoon, just spend some time and write down everything that you're doing, handling maintenance requests, putting stamps on envelopes, going to the post office, every task that you do every day for, to, for your business um, or your life, write it all down. And then see if there's things on that list that are drudgery for you, right? Like I hate doing spreadsheets, so I don't, right? I let someone else handle that and I outsource that. I'm not a good bookkeeper, so I don't do that. I outsource that. So look at this whole list of things that you're doing and then start to break them into little groups. Things that you really want to do that you love doing, great, continue to do those things. Things that are really impactful and helpful for your business, great. Do I need to do those or can I also have someone else helping me do those? And then what are the things that are in that drudgery zone, as Michael Hyatt calls it, the drudgery zone? If those are the things that are causing you anxiety, how can you outsource those things? And then start to break them into separate projects. So that's what I'm going to be doing during the holidays. I've got a lot on my plate these days, um, things that are causing me some stress separate from real estate that I need to outsource. I need to hire some additional people right now and really put this out of my out of my to-do to do bucket. So I'm kind of going through the same thing, just not in real estate. I hope you found that helpful, Pratap. I'd love to hear your feedback. Drop me a new, uh, drop me a phone call here in the new year 
Uh, let's see if we can nip some of this anxiety in the bud for you. All right, our next question. Hey, Clayton, Marcus here. I'm currently working on a fix and flip that I feel will be very profitable. Uh, in the long run, I'm obviously wanting to get into the rental game, but right now this is a way for me to get some good capital going. Uh, there has been, obviously, as everyone knows, a rise in interest rates and, uh, in my particular area, a rise in days on the market uh, for certain you know, certain areas. Uh, so I'm st still looking at you know alternative exit strategies for this fi fix and flip, one being the DSCR loan. From my understanding, it will allow me to cash out refi based on the potential uh, going rate rental income and around a 20% down payment. Uh, my question is, have you used this strategy? If so, what are your thoughts? Uh, and am I misunderstanding it? It just seems too good to be true that they'll go off uh, the potential uh, rental income uh, as well as no no verified income or reserves uh, from my personal stash. Uh, so uh, hope that hope you can help me with that question. I love what you do. Keep it up and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the question and good for you. Like, again, I love that you're thinking long term about getting into real estate investing, but first you need some capital with a fix and flip to get you there. Great, great, great. So I gave a speech a number of years ago to a group, a room full of a couple hundred wholesalers who were wholesaling properties. And I said, look, you guys are the, you guys are the property finders, okay? Eventually, you need to become a property keeper because until you become a property keeper, you're going to continue to have a transactional paycheck job. Right, because a fix and flip is not in real estate invest investing, and I'm glad to hear you understand that. So what you're doing is it's it's a paycheck, right? You'll flip that property, you'll make some good money, but then you've got to find the next property to flip. That's a paycheck, right? That's not a performing asset. So how can you then convert that into long term passive income? So anyway, just wanted to make that little point. Good for you for understanding that, but that's why I started wholesaling a number of years ago to make that capital so I could invest in real estate. And you're doing it with fix and flips. So good for, good for you. So as far as this DCR, DSCR loan, uh, let me just kind of go through and unpack that for you a little bit. Um, so what is a DCR, DSCR loan? It's a debt service coverage ratio loan. And it's a loan that allows a borrower to qualify based on cash flow that's generated from an investment property. And this comes through from the rental income as opposed to personal income. And it basically generates a debt to income ratio. And the higher the ratio, the better, right? So is the rent higher? Great. Then there you go. And they're going to be able to look at this. So that you can find these at different companies like um, Rand Life. There's a bunch of different places that will have different DC, DSCR loans. I personally have never done one of these loans. So to answer your question, I've never done one of these. Um, and it's a, they claim, you know, it's a groundbreaking way. This is what they say. The, the, you know, hey, that this is a groundbreaking way to purchase investment properties for seasoned and first-time investors. Um, you can use this loan for cash out purposes on existing properties or consolidate up to 50 properties into one loan and then a single payment. Um, a, a DSCR loan uses cash flow instead of standard debt to income ratios to qualify. So the way that they're very simple to qualify for actually because they're not really looking at you. In many ways, this is like a non-recourse loan. Again, they're not looking at you personally. The main qualifications are, number one, you must have an LLC set up and you, you're a small business entity. Number two, the borrower must be able to pr prove the cash flow from the investment property. So you got to be able to prove the, the books on this. Um, it can show, you know, it can be long term or short term rentals as well. And if you're unsure, then you have to fill out a form and kind of go through that process with them. So all I will say is what I'm concerned about with this loan is. Well, look, at Morris Invest, we use non-recourse loans, but we've negotiated with our non-recourse lenders over the years. We've developed a deep relationship with them. So the interest rates are way lower because we have a track record with them. And they come, they walk our properties. They see our new construction properties being built and they will provide non-recourse financing because they know they're in the best school district with the best jobs available and the tenants will stay for many, many years. So we have a long track record with the lenders for these types of loans. For you, maybe it doesn't have a track record for this type of loan. You're going to be paying, mark my words, a much higher interest rate. So just to take that into account, be very careful. Make sure the numbers make sense. That's all I care about. Make sure the numbers make sense. Make sure you, you know what the cash flow will be on this property. 
Now you're using it for a fix and flip, so they're gonna look at the potential of that cash flow that you need to be able to show that the you know, potential of this cash flow for a fix and flip. You might have a better luck. I've, again, I've never done this. I've never done a fix and flip like this. So you've got to remember how long are your, what are your, what are your holding costs? Because the market can turn. So you don't want to be left holding this bag if the market turns and then you can't flip the property. That's a problem. Can it cash flow and then you're still okay? Just cover your butt in this situation. That's all I want you to do. Just please cover yourself. Make sure that if you have to hold this property, that the cash flow will cover your mortgage and you're good to go and you're making some profits. Or if you can sell it and you know that you can make, get out with a certain number of profit on this um, based on the days on market. I know you said like, all right, we're seeing days on market that are going further now. Interest rates are higher. So just please cover yourself in this. But to answer your question, no, I've never done one of these loans. Um, but I definitely have done non-recourse loans uh, that have been fantastic for our investors. So I hope, hopefully that helps. I'd love to hear your update on that property. All right, our next question. Hi, Clayton. My name is Susan. I'm from South San Francisco, and I have a question regarding HELOCs. I understand you could use a HELOC to make a down payment on a property, but is the balance of the property's purchase price typically financed? And wouldn't this mean there are two debt payments? For example, if I purchase a property for one hundred thousand and use twenty five thousand from my HELOC as the down payment, how does the seventy five thousand balance get financed? And wouldn't this result in two concurrent finance or debt payments? Thank you. So great question, and the answer is yes. So you will have, I mean, unless you have cash sitting there, then why would you use the HELOC, right? So the twenty five percent down, twenty five thousand dollars down from your home equity line of credit. And let me, let me just give you an example again. So again, our properties, the minimum down payment for one of our new construction properties is about 50, 50,000. And a lot of our clients have a home equity line of credit that they use to make that purchase. And so they'll, they'll use 50,000 from their home equity line. And then they pay that back using the rent from the tenant in the property. Um, and remember, there's three stages of real estate investing, buy, own, and cash flow. So as long as you're acquiring properties, and you're not really experiencing the cash flow just yet. Like you're not you're not reaping the benefits of it and living your dream life with the cash flow. But what you're doing in that period of time is you're accumulating wealth because now the tenant is paying down those mortgages for you, Susan. So twenty five thousand dollars down that came out of your home equity line of credit, and the seventy five thousand dollars that you mentioned is being covered by financing from a bank. So you've got two different financial products, right? And then the tenant in the property is building the equity for you. I mean, this is how real estate pays you multiple ways, right? Your a tenant is building you equity. You're also getting the claim on your taxes depreciation. So you're getting that benefit back on your taxes, right? You forget that when you make this purchase, you're able to get a huge tax break. So that money back on your taxes could use to go to pay back your home equity line of credit and almost completely pay that back that forty or fifty thousand dollar down payment can be paid back almost immediately using these tax strategies. So the answer is yes, you'll have two different loans. But remember, in this buy, own, and cash flow strategy of, of real estate investing, you're buying. And now, as long as your cash flow is covering all of your debt on this, and you're making a little profit, I like to say it this way: as long as you, after all of your expenses, both of these loans are being paid back. Okay, you're cash flowing at least $100 above that amount, at least. So all of your taxes, all of your property taxes, all of your maintenance requests, any, any of that, plus your two loans, if all of that is covered, plus $100 cash flow, then you're golden, in my opinion. Gary Keller in the Millionaire Real Estate Investor book, he says a dollar, just $1. After all of your expenses are paid and taken care of, if you're just cash flowing one dollar, that's a win. The reason it's a win is because now I've got a I've got a property in my net worth column, and I'm basically breaking even for now. But the tenant is increasing my equity position year after year after year and paying my mortgage. And then once that paid off, that property is paid off in five years, now I own that property free and clear. And I can use that equity to acquire additional rental properties. So I hope you find that helpful. But yes, you would have two different financial products that you're using to buy that property. Just make sure that the numbers make sense across the board. 
So again, our team can help you for free, Susan, if you want to book a call with our team and you're interested, we can run numbers for you specifically on properties and play with these different financial products. Again, we work with over 100 different lenders, so we can pair you up with the right lender as well and help you figure those numbers out. Again, it's a numbers game. It's all it is. So just don't get emotional about it. <laughs> you know, it's just a numbers game and we figure out how to make it work within the structure of the property. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and I really hope you prepare. You know, again, we've been sounding the alarm about what's happening in this economy. I hope you're not putting your head in the sand. I hope you're really paying attention uh, and protecting your family right now. Please, please, please protect your family above all else. Okay. Making sure you own hard assets, making sure you have food supplies. We see food shortages coming. Okay. Make sure you have food supplies in your house, whether you're canning products, keeping, you know, fresh vegetables and canned meats in the house, things like that to protect your family and owning hard assets right now. Please, please, please heed this warning. We are heading for a major recession. All of the, all of the data is showing us that we're heading that way. And so what's the worst thing that can happen, right? If it doesn't happen the way that we think it will, great. Then you've got to look extra food in your house to protect your family. And you've also protected your family financially. So there's no downside to making these moves, okay? Please protect yourself. And have a great Christmas. We'll see you back here um, at right around the new year. And uh, again, have a great holiday with your family. Much love to all of you. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. It's the best way to preserve and protect your family. We'll see you next time.